the King of Kings. Hallelujah, the Lord of Lords. I don't care what's going on in my life and there's been some challenges. You're worthy of adoration, God. You're worthy of worship, God. We adore you because you are God all by yourself. We praise you today, God. We offer a sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah, we give it to you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whether I'm tired, I'm gonna worship you. We're gonna praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, anybody with me today? I choose to exalt the King of Kings. Hallelujah, it's a choice. I will, your praise will continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. I will honor you today, God. We praise you today, God. We worship you today, God. This is your time, God. Nothing else matters but you. We lay it all down today, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah for your mercy. For your mercy and your grace and for being my hiding place. Lord, oh Lord, I offer up, I offer up my sacrifice. You supply. You supply all my needs. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. Lord, you've been so good to me. That's why I offer up my sacrifice of prayer. Let's say it again for your mercy, sweet Lord. For your mercy and your grace and for being my hiding. So guess what? Oh, Lord, I offer up to you alone, God, sacrifice of praise to you. Everything I've needed, Lord, you've supplied. Thank you. You've supplied all of my needs. Lord, you've been so good to me. That's why I offer up, I offer up my I I I offer up, I offer up my I offer I offer up, I offer up my set. I offer to you, God. I offer up, I offer up my set. I won't hold back, God. Everything I am, God, I give it to you today. My sacrifice. I offer up, I offer up my sacrifice. I offer up, I offer up my sacrifice of prayer. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. 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 My sacred, all to you. I am everything to you, God. Everything that we are, we give to you, Lord. Hallelujah. My sacrifice. I offer up. I offer up. My you gotta show them you gotta show you gotta. I offer up, I offer up my sacrifice. Oh. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pray my sacrifice of praise. Oh. 
The Bible says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened and laden, and I will give you rest. He said, Take my burden upon me, upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I feel in my spirit today there is a heavy laden burden upon the body. And it is preventing the worship of God from going forth. And God is saying, lay it down at the altar. Lay it all down at the altar. The picture God gave me is going to an airport. And when you go to an airport, you have something called baggage claim. And if something is too heavy to take with you on the plane where you're seated at, you have to give it to the person behind the desk and they have to put it at the bottom of the plane. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places with him. So whatever you're carrying right now that's too heavy on your spirit and your soul, give it to him. It also says that you can have one carry on bag that's light enough to carry. That is the worship that we deserve to give to God. And the worship that breaks the atmosphere and changes the circumstances. The heavy burden you're feeling on your chest will be broken with your worship. The feeling that you have in your heart will be broken with your worship. The situation you're going through in your job in your life, in your marriage, in your everyday walk will be broken by your worship. This is fresh cleansing, but this is also a time to release it. This is a time to lay it all down at the altar and give God the praise he is due. This is the time to take on the same mindset that is in Christ Jesus. This is the same time to let that peace that passes all understanding flood your mind. This is that time when God is knocking at the doors of our hearts, asking us, will we open? Will you let the floodgates of praise come forth? This is the time to lay it all down and worship God because what you're carrying does not belong to you. Jesus took it on the cross. So everything you are feeling right now that is trying to hold you back or hold you down or make you feel condemned does not belong to you. It belongs on the cross. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, first off, Lord, we come before you asking you to change our mindsets, for you to change our thought process, for you to change our heart, oh God, for you to change our spirit, oh God. You do not desire your people to walk around heavy, burdened, and laden with the cares of this world, oh God. You do not desire us to walk around constantly choked by thorn bushes or burned by the sun or eaten by the birds of this world, oh God. For they are the burdens of the world and we carry with us the burdens of the kingdom. Father, help us to change our mindset. Strip away the false concepts and precepts that we allowed ourselves to take hold of. Take out our mind, take out our heart, take out our soul, take out our body and give us a new breath over it, oh God. Breathe new life into us, oh God. Breathe new worship into us, oh God. Breathe a new spirit into us, oh God. Breathe a new life into us, oh God. We need you to breathe afresh and new, oh God. For we cannot walk around with these same mindsets and precepts and concepts. For they become religious burdens to us, oh God. 
And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and liberty from captivity. So, Lord, we ask you, O oh God, to first off, wash our minds, wash our spirits, and wash our mindsets. For once we repent, O oh God, that is it. The blood has covered the rest. 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 And we thank you, O oh God. We do not walk around shackled and bound, but we walk around in victory. So, Lord, as we go back to our seats, stir up the fires within us, O oh God. Stir up the fires within us, O oh God. Stir up the fires within us, O oh God. Stir up the fires within us, O oh God, that we may bring forth tabernacle worship, O oh God, from the holies of holies, from your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Stir up the fires of worship, O oh God, that we may give you the praise. Do your name. In Jesus' name. Are you good, fresh anointing? Yeah. I'm good. How about you? You're great? How about if we bring a sacrifice?
to you. And we, there it is, the sacrifices, thanksgiving, oh, to the sacrifices of joy. And we offer to you, Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the And we offer, and we're going to slow it down. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. Hallelujah. 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 That's called the sacrifice. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. We adore you. We bow before you. We thank you. We offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been good. We 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 thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been good. Thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You've been faithful. Thank you. Your mercies are new every morning. We thank you. We bless you, God. We exalt you, God. We praise you, God. You're worthy of adoration, God. We exalt you, God. You are God and God alone. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to praise you, God. Hallelujah. We're going to give you your time, God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go to as the deer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, Lord, I don't... We long for you. We long for your presence. We long to hear your word. Lord, we need to hear from you. I need a word from you. Anybody else need a word from God? I need a direct word. Nothing else will do. Nothing else will do, God. But you and your word, your presence. So we long for you, God. Lord, we're thirsty for what you have to say to us, God. Because if you say it, we can make it. If you give us a direct word, we can keep on going. God, drugs don't do it. Shopping doesn't do it. Food doesn't do it. People don't do it. Nothing in this world does it but your presence, God. And so we long for you, God. As we sing this song, can you just close your eyes? And can you talk to your father? Make it a personal, personal thing. As the deer. As the panted So so long is that you alone, Lord God. You you alone are my heart. Desire and I long to worship as the deer, as the deer, as the deer panted for the water so, so long it had to You are what I
This is your turn. Love upon Jesus. Come on, love upon the Father. Tell him how you feel about him. Lord, you are my treasure. My treasure. You're my priority, Lord. My priority. None can compare to you. None can compare. You're so faithful. Great is the measure of your loyalty. Great is the measure of your Morning star. Oh, morning star. You true. Oh, morning star. Oh, morning star. You true. He's everything. Tell him he's everything. Everything. Hallelujah. Everything. my alpha you're the omega everything you're the i am that i am whatever i need that's who you are you're everything you're my healer you're my provider everything hallelujah you're everything you're the lord of hosts everything you're faithful you're faithful. You're faithful. Everything. You're merciful. You're kind. You're giving. You're beautiful. Everything. Hallelujah. Everything. There's none like you, God. You're everything to us. You're everything to us, God. Everything. This is our time to love you, God. This is our time to love up on you. You're beautiful, God. You're faithful, God. You're kind, God. you up God we focus in on you God hallelujah we trust you God we trust you God we trust you God you're everything you're everything you're everything you're everything to us God you're everything to us God you're everything God we worship You're everything, you're everything, you're everything, you're everything, you're everything, you're everything, we love you, Lord. You're everything, 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 we need you, we can't live without you. We can't live without you, God. We can't make it without you, Lord. We can't face another moment without you, God. You're everything. You're everything. We bless you, God. We adore you. We praise you because you're everything. We love you. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. You inhabit the praises of your people, God. 
we thank you lord we bow before you we adore you there's none greater than you we bow before you god you're everything you're everything we make no apologies for your greatness we follow you we love 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 you tell them you love them tell them you're perfect god your ways are perfect god everything you do is perfect god everything you do is perfect god you see everything everything you do is perfect we bow before you you're the only one that matters god your word is true god Can we just sing the one part as we close? My treasure, my priority. My priority. None can compare to you. Great is the measure of your Lord. None can compare to you, God. Hallelujah. You're everything to us, God. Morning 
store. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. Let's try just one more time, oh, morning star. <laughs> oh, morning Tell them. morning star, you truly are Hallelujah, glory, glory. Continue to praise God. Continue to lift him up. Hallelujah. For he is all that we could ever ask for, hope for, think on. Hallelujah. God is a, mm, mm, mm. he's all that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's continue to stay in the spirit of worship, the spirit of praise. Hallelujah. Believe in, hallelujah, what you're going before the Lord for that he shall answer because he is a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. And he loves us. He wants to answer every prayer. He wants to move mountains. He wants to lift us up out of self and out of flesh. Hallelujah. He wants us to grab a hold to him this morning and to love on him this morning. To love on him like you never loved on him before. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise that he so deserves because he is worthy. He is worth it all. Hallelujah. No matter what trial, tribulation, that you may go through God is a prayer answering God hallelujah he's a miracle worker you're looking at a miracle right here hallelujah it's nothing too hard for our God if you put your mind on him take your mind off your situation take your mind off your circumstances take your mind off what the doctor spoke to you hallelujah and look unto God oh my God he is worthy y'all he is worthy. Hallelujah. I want everybody to close their eyes. And I want to see yourself seated in the presence of God. Leave this place right here. Get into a spiritual, mm, 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 a spiritual position with the Lord. Allow the Lord to minister to your hearts. Allow the Lord to minister to your spirit. Allow the Lord to minister to your mind. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It might have been a hard week on this week. Huh? But God got a better day tomorrow. A better day this evening. Hallelujah. He said look unto him from which your help coming from. Hallelujah. Don't look unto man. Huh? Don't look unto nothing but God. Because only God can take you through. And only God can bring you through. When they tell you you're going to die, you can tell death, bye-bye. Because you can't go nowhere until God says you're leaving this place. So my prayer today is, did everybody close their eyes and talk to the Lord? Give the Lord every problem, every concern, everything that lays in your house. That you don't even talk about with your friends because you're too embarrassed. Give everything to God. Give the good things to God, the mediocre, and all in between. Because he is still a prayer answering God. He said nothing is too hard for him. He said to not lean unto your own understanding. But to trust and acknowledge him in all your ways. And he shall direct your path. Let him direct your path. Stop trying to do it on your own. Stop trying to do it yourself. Hallelujah. And lean into him. And watch him. Watch his work. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I pray, Father God, for our head of our household. I pray for both of our pastors, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. I pray your hilt and mantle lay upon them, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you rise them up, Father God, with fire, Father God. That you rise them up with race, Father God. That they will run even faster, Father God. That they will commit even more, Father God, unto your will and to your way. Because it's never over until you say it's over, Father. And it's not over for that part of the vineyard, Father. So I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you continue to strengthen them, oh God. 
that you continue to heal them, oh God, that you continue, Father God, to give them the vision that you had prepared for this place, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that every one in different ministries, Father God, will line up, Father God, according to your will, according to your purpose, according to your destiny. For it's not our ministry, it's God's ministry. And I pray, Father God, that we will lay before you, that we will have guidance and direction, Father God, where you're taking the ministry, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. I pray, Lord, that you dispatch your angels at the front door, God, that they will feel the love of God when they enter in, Father God, that when their foot cross the threshold, Father God, your spirit will say this is your place this is your home God in the name of Jesus God I pray father in Jesus name Lord that you send your healing mantle throughout this place father God heal minds father in the name of Jesus restore father God those things that the cranker worm and the caterpillar has eaten God binding a competition spirit father in the name of Jesus and praying for for unity spirit God a spirit of love a spirit of peace a spirit of oneness father in the name of Jesus God that's the Lord that you add on to a cheer father God that's empty father God that it be such an overflow in this place father that they would have to go and run and get chairs father in the name of Jesus God I pray God in Jesus name according to your will according to your purpose according to your destiny for this part of the vineyard father I pray God in Jesus name Lord that your spirit reign God that you go in every household father God that's represented here today God Dear father God you know the worries and the, the things that keep people up at night father in the name of Jesus God and I pray God that you visit their homes with your spirit oh God you let them see father God that they are being answered every prayer father it may not come when you want it but it will be on time father in the name of Jesus God I pray Lord in those that are in positions father God that they have the most value position God and that's the spirit of love God that they will draw all other men and women in father that when they come in God they just won't sit God but they'll get busy father God about your business father in the name of Jesus I pray your healing mantle father God to rest and rule in this place father I pray for the word God that it shall meditate in our hearts and our minds and our souls oh God that that word father God when we leave we'll take it with us God and we'll share it abroad father in the name of Jesus God that the ones that see us father God to say man I want to go to that house because I see a change in that person father in the name of Jesus God and I thank and I praise you I pray for everyone father God that we pray for daily father God the names the households God for you know every household God you know everyone father God situation by situation circumstance by circumstance even those little hidden things father God those things that we don't talk about God those things father God that we think don't nobody see father God but you see father in the the name of Jesus God I pray God that you continue to move by your spirit throughout this program father in the name of Jesus God we want to see miracles we want to hear miracles we want to see your move God not man's move but the move of God father God flow from heart to heart to breast to breast God those that are not speaking to one another God let them drop it off father God and let them walk in your love God in Jesus holy name I pray all these things amen and amen Praise the Lord, saints. Is Deacon David Iden in the house? Amen. He's going to give us our welcome. Praise the Lord. That's Brother Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. It's the first time I'm doing this, y'all. <clears throat> All right. Amen, amen. It gives me great pleasure to stand before you to say, if you are the first time visitor with us, please stand so we can acknowledge you. First time visitors, please stand. All right, here we go. I didn't do too bad. All right. If it's your second, third time, I acknowledge you. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Fresh anointing, you know what to do. 
Let's greet our visitors, welcome them like we always do. Amen. Say hallelujah so I know y'all are alive. I'm getting ready to uh, introduce our speaker, but I'm going to let his son introduce him today. Not yet. <laughs> ready. Be ready. I need to say a word about the speaker last week. Because some of you were offended, uh, you didn't agree with all the things that he said. I want you to know that our, when I say our, I'm talking about my wife and myself. Our intent is one thing, to see you whole. Amen. To be very honest with you. We believe in healing, but healing is secondary to your wholeness. Because if you whole, you don't need healing. That man traveled all the way from California at his expense. At his expense. We didn't give him any money. His work is in a museum, the Smithsonian Museum. He's ministered to some of the big mega pastors like Creflo Dollar, Benny Hinn, uh, Michael Freeman. But my goal, Pastor Jay's goal, is to see you whole. I've been knowing some of you for a number of years, and you've struggled with some physical ailments. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. So, oh, our intent, our desire, our motivation was you. See you healed. Some of you were upset that he came in with a walker. Well, the reason he came in with a walker was because he was teaching at a seminar and fell in a hole. And, and the sinkhole he fell in, a piece of metal went through his foot. But he walked in here. That's a miracle. And I believe the enemy has him on his wanted poster because he's cured a lot of people. He's researched. He's researched a thousand, hundreds, hundreds of people, both dead and alive. So if you were offended, I apologize. But you need to know what our intent was, and that was to help you. Amen. And since I'm talking about that, I need to say a word about this coronavirus. We're not going to panic. Amen. Pastor Jay has put a prayer in the bulletin. Would you open your bulletin right now? Sister Jeanette did, did this prayer. We're going to claim God's promises. My Bible tells me that no plague shall come not thy dwelling. I just wanted you to have some word that you could pray and speak on and stand on. 
and on both sides is scriptures telling uh, the word tells us what we're supposed to do in the time of trouble he will hide us we have people talking about recession and stock markets crashing and all kind of all kind of things are going on around us and we're not acting like we don't see it we just know who our god is so we just want you to get strengthened in the word we have some of the women who decide they're going to be in consecration this month. Feel free to consecrate, because there's some stuff you need for your house. Some of us need some stuff in our marriage fix. Our children need to be fixed. We got job issues and money. It's time to press into God. He is waiting. He loves us. So I just, just wanted to give you some promises. I put a prayer at the bottom that Minister Jeanette gave me. So you can just trust God. So instead of talking unbelief, speak faith. Like Pastor C just said, no plague will come nigh my dwelling. The Lord is my light. He is my salvation. He's the strength of my life. In a minute, we're going to sing that old time song. That's going to be our special. But first, we're going to have Precious to introduce his daddy. Tobias is going to introduce his father this morning. Y'all remember Tobias? I, I believe I dedicated him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Today is a very good day for me and my family to be back at FACC after a very long time and today uh, my father will preach today some very good information <clears throat> so without further ado I introduce to you Pastor Troy Corbin. Come on up here, Father. Y'all can stand. We're going to sing this song. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen thine heart. Hallelujah. I believe God. How about yes, you? Man. This is old school. Shall we? <laughs> Sing it loud and declare it loud. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Declare it louder, God. The Lord
the time of trouble. In the time of trouble, he will hide thee. In the time of trouble, he will hide thee. In the time of trouble, he will hide thee. Whom shall I declare in the time of trouble, no matter what's going on? In the time of trouble, he will hide me. In the time of trouble, he will hide me. In the time of trouble, he will hide me. Who shall I be? Whom shall I fear? Praising me, you praising the Lord of Lords. 
Yah, the Elohim, the Most High God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't just sing that song. Mean it. Mean it. I'm not worried about anything at all. And when I pray, I fully believe and expect it to be heard and done. Period. That's it. Amen. Good morning, fresh anointing. It is absolutely good to be back home. I greet you all in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. First, as always, uh, I want to get the amenities out of the way. I want to give honor to God, the Most High, the only true God. And then I want to give honor to the pastors of this house who I love dearly. This is my mom and pop. They grew me up here. Give honor. Hey, it's the truth. It's the truth. They grew, I grew up here. They raised me from a pup in the spirit. Remember? Remember I was wild and crazy? Man? I'm still wild and crazy, you know? But I, I certainly do thank you and honor you, Pastor C. Can we give them some honor? It is due. Pastor C and Dr. Dr. and Jayola Walker, pastors of this branch of Zion, doing a phenomenal job. I must say you look well. And I am so glad to see you looking well. Amen. God is good. God is good. Uh, we need to continue to pray for them and undergird them on every hand uh, your leaders amen it's no small thing to pastor a people for as many years if they have pastored and have labored and have prayed for you and if you know anything about their hearts uh, to me they exhibit they exhibit love amen and stop thinking they're perfect because they ain't. They're struggling with things just like we all are. Amen. So undergird them and pray for them continually. Amen. And also to any clergy that may be visiting us today and the elders and the leaders and ministers of this house, uh, bless you. And to you, the household of faith, my brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Thank you. And bless you as well. There's no place like home. No place like it. Amen. Well, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to offend nobody. My puppies might stink a little bit. That's all right, sir. I ain't taking my shoes off. I had some pretty shoes on. My wife said, "Tone it down." I had some silver sparkly ones on. My wife said, "No." Tone it down, you know. So I took them off and put the black ones on. Right. Am I right? I'm telling the truth. I had some, I was gonna come up in here and fly. That's all right, sir. Uh, I want to hurry up. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna be before you long. I'm not gonna hold you hostage because we have to do communion, and I want to remain faithful to the time. Amen. Uh, Y'all look good. Yeah. I see some old faces, uh, but I see a lot of new faces too. And that is very encouraging because that lets me know that God and the Spirit of God is still moving in this place. Amen. So for those of you who do not know me, all the new folks that don't know me, I'm uh, Pastor Troy. <laughs> he said they will. I'm Pastor Troy Corbin. Uh, you saw, you met my son here. Can my wife, can you stand up, Asia? Uh, we bring you greetings from Fresh Glory of God Ministries in New Jersey. And the little one, she swears she's my wife. But
but uh, I, that's my shadow. I love her. That's my first girl. I got all hard heads, and I got the first girl, so uh, Trinity. Yeah. So uh, we are moving. Uh, my wife is doing women's ministry, and the Lord uh, just keeps sending women who are dealing with issues to her all races, nationalities, creeds, and colors, and she's doing a phenomenal job, uh, and, and so she's settling in with that. Uh, I am in the midst of working uh, outreach. I'm talking about drug and alcohol and prison ministry. My sister Charmaine Wallace, I need to acknowledge her. She's working with me. Amen. Uh, and we are, we are, uh, God has set up, up, set us up, and we are moving into that uh, because uh, that's my calling. That's who God has called me to. I have a voice to them. I have not forgotten my journey. Amen. And uh, but for the grace of God, there go I. Amen. So y'all got a little clue of background. I did not grow up in church. Amen. You know. So uh, I never talk about that stuff too much. The only time I mention it is because God delivered me from all of it. And I am eternally grateful. But when you get delivered, saints, don't forget to go back. Do not forget to go back. God does not take your voice away from the people and from where you came from. Amen. Uh, so before we get started, and y'all, this is a little not churchy, but before we get started, the Lord gave me this while I was consecrating, really, he gave me this. He said to tell my people to laugh. He said, laugh, y'all not, y'all don't laugh enough. So think, take a few minutes, I dare you to think about something that's crazy. I was going to bring my crooked teeth in and put them in and make y'all laugh. But God said, go ahead and laugh. Take about a minute and laugh. Think about something funny. Think, think about me if you want. Just laugh. Come on, laugh. That's a command. Go ahead and laugh. I mean, get some belly laughs in. Y'all don't laugh enough. Laughter is healing. It really is. It prolongs your life. It reduces stress. It burns up calories. It protects your heart. Oh, come on now. Reduces pain. It strengthens your spirit. Laugh. Y'all ain't laughing. Laugh. Come on, man. Look at his face. Come on, man. Ha, ha. You don't turn around. Yes. He turned around. I'm talking to you. Come on, man. There you go. I see his teeth. Y'all need to laugh. Give God one minute of laughter. It shakes up the devil. It shakes up the devil because he doesn't have you anymore. I don't care what your problem is, what your situation, go ahead and laugh. That's what the Lord gave me. Y'all know I'm not traditional by now. But you really do need to laugh. Some of y'all got the line on your head from frowning. Come on. It ain't that serious. Y'all just sung the song, Who Shall I Fear? What is it that's stopping you from exhibiting joy? I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is, really. When they sang that song, that's my testimony. I don't care what it is. Uh, my wife, she's a little bit more excitable. You know, <laughs> don't worry about it. God is in control. God is, in, and, I, and that's, am I right? Am I right? I'm, listen, I ain't worrying about nothing. And church folk, I ain't scared of you. I ain't scared of y'all. Y'all got offended and everything last week. No man or woman of God comes in this any place with the intention to offend anyone. Nobody. Nobody comes in here with the intention to offend them. I'm not scared of you. Somebody might get their feelings hurt today. 
So I'm apologize in advance. I love you all. I do. But I would much rather somebody pull me than for me to continue in my air. You don't love me if you see something. You see a boogie in my nose and you keep letting me walk around all day. But you don't love me. I'm still trying to make y'all laugh. How you love me and you letting me walk around like that? Huh? So that's why we, we have to have each other's back. Because I could be wrong. And I need you to say, listen, bro, you know, in love. Listen, bro, you was a little off there. You know what I mean? You know, and, and that happens to all of us. Which one of us is without fault? We're seriously flawed. So today, uh, I'm going to get started. I'm not going to hold you hostage. Seizing the opportunity to be a loving community. That's what I'm going to minister to about today. If we could get that first slide up there. Amen. So really, Proverbs 17, 22, it says, A merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bones. So the Lord gave me that. Look, 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 they laughing. Laughter is the best medicine. It really is. Some of us do not laugh enough. You're all tight and serious and everything. For what? Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. And the Lord will deliver you out of it. That's all. It's not that we go, we're not going to have any tests and trials. He says, when you fall into divers' temptations, count it all joy. Amen? So y'all need to laugh. Really. For several reasons. Some of y'all ain't laugh. And you came in here this morning, I made you laugh. Some of y'all needed that. Amen. But let's get into the word. Uh, so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. You are a wonderful God. You alone are worthy of praise. And so, Lord, we do ask you to forgive us for anything that may have offended you. Have mercy on us. Restore us, O oh God. And Father God, I cannot do this without you. I decrease. I hide behind the cross that you would be glorified. Lord God, let me not speak with just eloquence of speech. But follow this message with signs, wonders, and miracles, Lord God. I pray for the opening of the eyes of your people and the uncorking of their ears. I pray that this word would fall on good ground. Deliver those who need delivering. Strengthen those who need strengthening. Encourage those who need encouraging. Set some free. Save some today, Lord God. Let your perfect will be done in the sight of your people with power and glory. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Amen. So if you'll allow me, I would like to sup with you around the subject of your theme today. Seizing the opportunity to be a loving community or a love community. Amen. Seizing the opportunity. And I would like to approach the subject from the perspective of, look at her tipping. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm going to make y'all laugh all day. She tipping. Tipping. Love you. Love you. She know, she know, that's, I can do that with her. Um, but I would like to approach it from the perspective of why we need to seize the opportunity. Amen? Is that all right? Then I'm going to help usher you into it. Amen? So if you would, meet me in the book of Matthew. Chapter 22, I'm going to give you three reasons why 
we need to seize this opportunity to become a loving up. And it is a prophetic theme. It is very prophetic. Amen? So I'll get right into it. Matthew chapter 22, starting at the 36th verse. When you have it, you can say amen. Matthew chapter 22. If you don't have it, it's up on the board. It's up on the screen. Why should we be a loving community? Matthew 26, starting at the 36th verse. And this is Jesus uh, uh, talking with his disciples. And it reads, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Well, actually, these Sadducees and Pharisees were trying to chat, trap Jesus here. And Jesus was so cool and so wise and full of wisdom. And, and he knew their thoughts before they even tried to come at him. And so they came at him, which is the greatest commandment in the law. Here they go bringing up the law. And they had no clue that Jesus was the fulfillment of the law. Amen. Amen. And he said, Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. There it is, love. The Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Or like you love yourself. Amen. I'm going to talk about that part a little later. Because if you don't love you, you can't love me. Amen. And I'm snatching some halos this morning. Because we got to get honest so we can get delivered. Amen. Also, Mark 12, 30 and 31 and Luke 10, 27 all give the same account. So the synoptic gospels all give the same account. Amen. Remember, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. First and greatest commandment. Second greatest commandment is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor like you love yourself. Second reason. Can we get to the next slide? There you go. First John 420. I love this one. If a man, first John 420, you can get to it or it's up on the board. I'll give you few seconds to locate it first John not the gospel of John first God first John when you have it let me know amen, amen. hallelujah if a man say I love God and hates his brother he's a liar say filled with the Holy Ghost blood flow you a liar For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Hmm? Oh, I love you. Some of that love y'all can keep. How can you say you love God and you don't love your brother? I'm gonna get to the answer to that. You see, you see me, you see me every day in the flesh, tangible. You can touch me. You can call me. I don't like him. I don't like her. For what? What they do to you? And even if they did, you're commanded to forgive them. Huh? Is that Bible? Amen, I'm just checking. Just checking. Now we got some problems with forgiveness. Well, I'm going to forgive, but I ain't going to forget. That's not scriptural <laughs> forgiveness. Because God throws our stuff in the sea of forgetfulness. And we're commanded to forgive in the manner that God forgives. 
You holding on to that thing. They controlling you from afar. You don't even realize it. They, you puppet on the string. Because you just cannot let that thing go. I'm going to the grave with this. Well, hope it's not an early one. Amen. Reason number three. I told you I'm giving you three reasons why we need to see. But I ain't going to be up here long. This is where we are now. This is the third reason why we need to assert, uh, seize the opportunity. Second Timothy three. Second Timothy three. Now, if you don't realize this, you're just sleep. You're comatose. And when I say sleep, I mean you've been knocked out. People in here used to box and fight and stuff. You know, when you get hit and your brain gets short-circuited, you're asleep before you even hit the canvas. And the thing about that type of sleep, you don't remember how, what happened. Everybody I know in the ring, when they got up after a knockout, they're like, come on, man, let's go. Man, you got knocked out. They don't remember what happened. They have no clue as to what happened. That's what I mean by sleep. Second Timothy 3 to 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Here it is. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Now, now put, a, put, a, put a finger in that, in that statement right there because there's some scriptures. I'm going to get to some stuff about loving yourself, but it has to be balanced. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, want something somebody else, have boast, boasters, boasters. I'm this, I'm that, I'm, you ain't nothing. Proud. Blasphemers, here we are, children, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, girls liking girls, boys liking boys. That is not God's original intent. Amen. Two men, two women cannot procreate. You can jump up and down all night long. You are not going to make a baby. And that is God's original intent. So they, 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 they out here and they're trying to make it normal. And they're trying to make these rights and all this stuff. And trying to make it equivalent to civil rights. And it's not. Civil rights is about being treated like a human being. These people are petitioning to participate in a behavior that God calls an abomination. So if you're in here and your feelings hurt, don't get mad at me. Now, we love you. We love you. Because that sin ain't no different than no other ones. Amen. We do love you. And we're going to love you till you get it right. But it's wrong. And so we're in a time where people are calling right wrong and calling wrong right. Amen. Oh, I'm snatching some halos in here today. I ain't scared of you. The truth remains regardless of whether you believe it or not. Without natural affection, truth breakers say they're going to do something and then don't do it. False accusers lying on people, tarnishing their character, character assassination. Because I don't like her. She ain't did nothing to you. You don't like yourself. Because the thing that you see in others that you disapprove of is you. You see yourself. Incontinent. P. 
peeing and pooping on yourself spiritually. Then the pastor's got to come and change your little filthy diaper. Fierce, just mean for no reason, miserable, just mean. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. For no reason, just mean. All the time. You don't like nobody. But the flip side of that is nobody like you neither. I remember I was teaching. I teach adults. And then the student, you're a grown woman. I don't like you. I don't necessarily like you neither, but I'm not here for that. I'm here to get you to become what you paid money for. Amen? Because deep calls in the deep. Shallow calls in the shallow. I'm not a shallow man. You know, but I understand. I'm going to get you there. And she came back after she said, you're the best teacher I ever had. Thank you so much. despisers of those that are good. Saints, folks just ain't going to like you because they didn't like Christ. They didn't like Jesus. So what make you think they're going to like you? Stop worrying about it. But they don't like me. I don't like you. I love you. How you going to fight that? Traitors. They'll leave you in a minute. Heady, high-minded. We got to watch that one in church. And you got to watch that with your pedigree and your degrees and them letters and before and after your name. You got to watch that in church. You got a little position, got a little title. Amen. Y'all know how y'all. Listen. You up there now. You ain't arrived. Paul said, it's not that I have arrived. You ain't arrived. You can't arrive in God. He's inexhaustible. You, you graduate from one of your little faults, he going to show you another one. Amen. The one thing I love about Elder Sonny is he's the same always. I call him John the Baptist. He don't change. He, he, you ain't got to call him Elder, none of that. He just do what God tells him to do. And he's doing a great work. But we don't, we don't need no accolades. And there's many of you the same way in here, but, I, but that's my man. I just point him out because I haven't seen him in a long time. But I love that man because he showed me some humility. He, he helped make me humble. Because, you know, when you come into church, you, you, you got all kind of stuff going on. Amen? I'm just, listen, I'm as real as they're going to get. You know, but he, 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 he actually allowed me and showed me how to be humble. And sometimes he humbled me. <laughs> Sometimes, because Sonny have a way of talking to you. And he didn't agree with everything I said. Amen? But he, he was good enough and faithful enough to tell me the truth. Amen? And he's just consistent. He's always the same. Amen? Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Oh. Y'all know y'all like some pleasure. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Where's the, where's the power? Hey, y'all can do all the churches. Oh, pray the Lord, sugar. I'm blessed and highly favored. Y'all know the churches. A form, right, too stressed to be blessed. Ain't no such thing. You're going to go through it down here. Right or wrong? You're going to go through it. But God says he'll deliver you out of all of it. So it's not like you're not going to have no trials. or ain't like you're not going to get angry. 
Oh, I don't get mad. You's a lying wonder. Some of y'all colorful language be flowing out of your mouth when you get mad. I ain't scared of y'all. How do I know? Mm. Denying the power thereof. Where are the signs and the wonders and the miraculous? Where is it in the church today? Where are the signs and wonders? And I pray all night. That signs and wonders and miracles would follow because I believe God's word. When we preach signs and wonders and miracles are supposed to happen. When anybody gets saved, that's a miracle. I believe in blind. Some of y'all don't believe. First, some of you ain't reading the word. And then you don't believe what you read. Because the scripture said we got the power over all of the power of the enemy. He says that we can heal the sick, cast out demons, open blind eyes, and even raise the dead. I lost somebody from my ministry. I lost somebody from the ministry because I told him I was going to a funeral and I said I'm going to see if God wants this person raised from the dead. But I simply believe I simply believe we got the power to do it. And I'm not saying God is going to do it. I don't know. But we have the power to do I simply believe. So when I pray for somebody, in my mind, they're healed. We ain't waiting for it. It says, by his stripes, we are, present tense, healed. That's why the pastor's sitting here today. They heal. I decree it. Y'all got the power to say some stuff. Decree it and declare it. And it is. Because in the kingdom, in the eternal realm, it just is. We, it's no past, present, or future. It simply is. And y'all say the prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done. How? Is any sickness in heaven? Huh? Then it is. You are healed. Oh, well, I got the sick. You ain't got nothing. Stop saying you got it. As you keep saying it, you're going to keep manifesting it. There you go. Amen. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. From such turn away, the scripture tells us. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses, lead captive women, silly and all that. Y'all women better beware. Wolves coming in sheep's clothing. Talking about they want to pray with you. Better get on out of here, fool. It's in the scripture. It says, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, I've just given you the three reasons why. That's only three, as many more. Of why we need to seize this opportunity to become a loving, uh, uh, loving community. As believers, we should be discerning the times. Amen. And seasons. We should know where we are in the cosmos and in the times and seasons. Ephesians 5, 16 very quickly says, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. That was the NIV version. We've got to make the most of every opportunity. Can you give me that next slide, please? Here it is. Opportunities are usually disguised as hard work. So we don't take advantage of them. We don't recognize the opportunity. Amen. Because you got to do something. You got to work. Faith without works is dead. Amen. So when 
God opens up a window of opportunity and you are most blessed because the window of opportunity is open today. It's time for us to take advantage of it. It suggests that the opportunity may not always be there. Amen. God opens up a window of time. It's called grace. And then he shuts it. One scripture says, find me while I may be found. That suggests that he may not always be found. Amen. And so we have to take the advantage of the opportunity as it exists. It's like a sale. Sales don't last forever. Oh, I ain't getting no amen from the women. I know you're shopping. Oh, this on sale. I got to get down there now. It's on sale. I got to have it in this on sale. It's an opportunity for you to save money, but they do not last. Amen. Here we go. I hope I don't offend anybody. First off, the world and the church has totally ignored, forgotten, and shunned the Ten Commandments. And we have to be careful in church because we're taught that it's law. And so we think that we don't have to observe the law. But lawlessness is of the enemy. And we do have to observe the law. Because Jesus himself said, not one jot nor tittle will pass away from this law. So we talk about the double portion. The former and the latter. But we can't have the double portion if we've disregarded the former. We talk about the new covenant, but we don't understand that the feast days, the Sabbath, and the commandments, and not just 10 of them, it's 611 of them. But we've forgotten that. We get away from that. That's why the world is in the condition it is in now. Thou shalt is the first four is your relationship with God, and the last six is your relationship with mankind. Thou shalt not kill. First one, you shall put no other gods before me. Amen. We got to get back to that. I strongly encourage you to get back to the Old Testament. Some of y'all don't even know where the Ten Commandments is in the Bible. Ooh. I ain't going to put nobody on the spot. Where they at in the Bible? Somebody tell me. Oh, we got some Bible readers in here. Hallelujah. Okay. But we've got to get back to that as a whole. As a standard. As a standard. Don't let nobody tell you about the law and all that. Okay, break the law. See if they don't got some jewelry for you. And you, you covering your face. You wasn't covering it when you was doing what you was doing. Now you want to cover your face up because the camera's on. Break the law out here. And so we transgress God's law first. Before you even get to the point of being able. It's called lawlessness. Get back to the laws of God as a standard. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to be up here much longer. So because of that, that's why we in 2 Timothy 3.3. 3. Last days. People should be lovers of themselves. Covetous, boasters, proud, and all of that. And some of this stuff has crept into the church. Amen. We've forgotten our first Love. Revelations 2, very quickly. 
Paul wrote this letter to Ephesus. To, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has born and has patience and for my namesake has labored and has not fainted. Good church. Amen. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. So you're doing all this stuff. You're doing works and you're helping people and all that. You're calling people frauds and, and all of that that are not uh, what they say they are. But nevertheless, I have something against you because you have left your first love. You're not going to do this until you first get back to loving God. And, it's, and you have to do it with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul. He gives you instructions on how to love him. Because you ain't going to love nobody else if you don't first have. You have the capability, if you're saved, you have the capacity to do it. But until you do it wholeheartedly, you can forget about loving your brother. Amen? Remember, therefore, here's the instruction to all of us. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and Repent. And God, for the, uh, for the last, uh, I want to say, three months, God has had me in a state of perpetual repentance. Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking about crying. Lord, I offended you this. I didn't do this. I didn't. He just had me in a state of repentance. I couldn't figure out why. And it's okay. Your sins are forgiven. But some, you've got to go back and repent about some things. I'm trying to help you out here, saints. You got to go back and get real with God and repent about you ain't that holy. Which is sanctified self. God has had me in a state of repentance. Some things old, some things current. Amen. I'm trying to help you get here. Remember, therefore, from whence you have fallen and repent, do the first works, or else I will come unto you quickly and remove your candlestick out of his place, except you repent. You think he playing with you? How many parents we got in here? When you say something, are you playing with your kids? You playing with your children? My son do like this sometimes because he know I ain't playing with him. He walk by me. I'm not accustomed to repeating myself. Bible says spare not the rod. Now, I ain't talking about busting him all upside the head and all of that. But you need, they need to feel something sometimes because you're saying it too much. Oh, we don't do that here. All right. Put the fear of God in them early. That's part of training your child in the way he should go, and when he gets old, he won't depart from it. That's part of that. And he know I love him, because I, after I knock him down, pick him back up. No, I don't be knocking him down. But I let him know that I love him and I let him know why I had to do that. And I teach him scriptures. I teach him the scriptures to go with it. They, they, they tell you. 
They got a time. They got to sit down and we do a show. It's not always, I try to make it fun for them. It's not always just reading the Bible. They got a little show called Kingdom Preppers and it talks about little kingdom preppers. It's kid stuff and it lets them know the scriptures and lets them know what God says about the things in life. So I let them watch that. It's, it's, it's colorful. It's animated and everything. So I let them watch that. But they got to watch that. There's no choice. They don't have a choice. Amen. So let's remember our text very quickly. I, I, we got to get to communion. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now we got a couple problems here. We got a pr couple problems here. Number one, the two major points here are love God. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let me quickly give you the seven levels of love. Now, we, 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 we heard the other negative scripture about self-love, right? It says men will be lovers of themselves. And that means they have no regard for God because anything you are, anything you have, anything you will be is only because of God. And so they disregard that. They think it's them. And they're control freaks. They think they're gods and they can control this and control. There's a lot of drug dealers. They're not addicted to the drug itself, but they're addicted to the power and the control. Amen. Amen. Let me give you the seven levels of love very quickly. Uh, can you put them up? I don't know if y'all can see that. Uh, but number one is eros. That's the purely sexual, physical type of love. And, uh, you know, you can love that thing. Oh, amen. That's the thing that helps men be attracted to women and women be attracted to men. Then there's phileo. That's some... Um, when affection is evolved, when you're affectionate to one. Then there's storge, and these are all, what, Greek words, I think? Love of the child, the kind of love you would give your children is storge. And then there's agape. That's the kind of God love that God does us. It's selfless, not selfish. Amen. Then there's something called ludus, which is a playful love. And then there's pragma, which is a long-lasting love like Pastor C and Pastor J. You know, they in practice. I mean, 44 years. Woo! Glory. They still in love. Look how she affectionated him. <laughs> and then I want to get to this one. It's called Philousia. It's the love of self. Now, I want to get some people delivered today. In fact, you could argue... That the Bible teaches self-love. Now what we do is with the scripture that I read, the text, we love God, we love our neighbor. But it says to the degree that you love yourself, some of us are self-loathing. Some of us don't like ourselves. I would even go so far to say some of us hate ourselves. I was in that state because I was told as a young man that I would never amount to anything. And so I didn't care and I acted it out. And then I began to say, you stupid fool, you can never get it right. You never do anything right. Every time I messed up, you never get it straight. You never hated myself. To the degree that I began to become a gang member and a drug addict. So I wouldn't feel. I didn't want to feel. Anything. So what I'm going to say is about to shock you. Many of you sitting here today, right now, don't love yourself. Many of you here. Do not know how to love yourself. 
And so we really can't love God. And so we really can't love others. And the devil has subtly done this to us. Amen. Over time. The fact that someone else loves you does not rescue you from the work of loving yourself. Amen? The fact that someone else loves you doesn't rescue you from the project of loving yourself. And so we go into relationships. Not loving yourself. I, I, all this is my testimony. So I can't receive love. I don't know how. I can't even receive love from someone who genuinely loves me because I don't know how to love me. Therefore, I cannot reciprocate. I can't give it back. I don't know how. And men, we ain't saying that. We ain't saying that. We got all these masks on. I love you. When we say that, that doesn't mean what you think it means, ladies. When a man tell you he love you, unless he's genuine, it doesn't mean what you say when you tell us we love you love us. It's not the same thing. Amen? Some valid reasons for this. Very quickly. You can't love the father. Number one, you can't love the father because many times we equate how our earthly fathers treated us to the love of the father. We, we, we equate it with that. So, you know, my daddy abandoned me. So God's going to abandon me. Lie from the pit. God will love you with an everlasting love. And it's not based on your behavior or your performance. Somebody's going to get free today. Secondly, we can't love ourselves because of some trauma that happened to us. Doesn't matter whether it happened when you were young, whether you're in your teenage years, or whether you became old. We can't love ourselves because of some trauma. But it's not your fault. Trauma is highly individualized. And so the question is, not what's wrong with you, but what happened to you? And then now you got trust issues. I don't trust you enough to share that with you. I can't get intimate with you. And some of you can't get intimate with God. You won't let him get close enough to deal with that thing. Oh, amen. Therefore, you cannot love your neighbor or your brother and sister as you are. Remember, God's going to ask you, how can you say you love me and you can't love your brother and your sister? And there's reasons for that, but it's not your fault. You've been traumatized. Amen. Don't look at me with the holy face. You've been traumatized. I'm trying to get people delivered today. And set free. God is trying to do that. The question is, will you let him? Because he's, he's able. And he's willing. But will you let him? You're going to have to put your big boy and big girl pants on today to do this. Huh? Some of y'all dealing with abandonment issues. From a long, long, long time ago. People dead and gone. You're still dealing with that thing. You haven't 
let it go. You haven't been healed. Some of y'all dealing with rejection. See the rejection. We know what seeds do. What do they do? They grow down and they root and then they grow up. Amen. Some of y'all got major, major, major trust issues. Some of y'all don't even trust yourself. Some of you been abused physically, mentally, spiritually. Amen. Trauma. Some of you have been hurt so deeply, you find it hard to forgive. You've been carrying that garbage can around with you all of your life. Forgiveness is for you. It ain't for them. They doing what they do. You said, he hurt me. I can't believe it. Well, you better believe it. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Some of you can't forgive yourself. You did something. You're forgiven for it. Forgive yourself. I messed that up. It won't happen again. And keep it moving. Ain't nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. Some of y'all dealing with bitterness. Let a root of bitterness grow up in you. And I got to get that straight because he says love your brother or your neighbor to the degree that you love yourself. So I'm bringing it down to where you live at right now. We're going to deal with you and only you. Today is your opportunity. Take hold of it. Grab it. Seize it. Choke it. That's what seize means. Amen. So I've got news to tell you today. Hey. First of all, it's not your fault. You didn't know any better. It ain't your fault. Stop blaming yourself. Some of y'all weighing out two pairs of kneecaps, kicking yourself in the behind. Stop it. Not your fault. Second of all, you're getting delivered today. Amen. Love is so much more than an emotion. It is the essence of who God is. And today, you're going to need to learn how to love you. And, I, and remember, it has to be balanced. I'm not talking about, oh, Lord, look, God, I'm the, the, the no. Because of you, Lord, I am who I am. And I have what I have. And my future is bright. You have good plans for me. Hallelujah. Now, here we go. Hear the spirit of the Lord clearly. I'm going to do two things with your permission. I'm going to have an altar call. For those of you who are dealing with some of those issues that I talked to, you need to get free so that you can seize this opportunity to be a loving community. Amen. Don't let your title, don't let the letters, the degrees, your pedigree stop you from hearing the spirit of the Lord and coming up here. I don't care who you are. I ain't interested in your, your sin and your situation. I just want you to be free. The Lord God wants you to be free so that we can do this, so that we can become a loving community. You got to get rid of that stuff. That's what God sent me here for. To set the captives free. Amen. 
So I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. We're going to come up here and we pray. You're going to get free. And you're going to begin to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul. And we can take communion with a clean heart and a clear conscience. Amen. Don't walk up and don't leave this place the same way you came in. Don't take this communion. And you got art in your heart against yourself. Huh? Can the musicians come up and start? Because I'm going to call. I've got all to call anyone who is dealing with bitterness, anyone who's dealing with self-loathing, anyone who is not saved, anyone who is backslidden. And I want the people who are coming up for salvation over here, and I want everybody else over here. Hear the spirit of the Lord. Check your heart. Check your condition. If you need to get rid of something, if you've been hurt, if you've been abused, and you still carry, see it's subconscious. So I want you to think for a minute. It's subconsciously working in your life. If you can't love God, if you can't love, it's no shame here. We're not judging nobody. There's no judgment. It's about you getting free. This is what God wants to do in your life today. If that's you, come on up. Come on, come on. Is there another? I'll wait. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. You're worthy. If there's anything in you that is preventing you from loving the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul, if you've been hurt and you never dealt with that thing, if you messed up, you hurt somebody, you never f forgave yourself, Come up here and get free. Seize the opportunity to be a loving community. I'll wait. I'll wait. The Lord will wait. Today is your day. Do not leave out of here the same way you came in here.